Welcome to another episode of our Eagle Perspective podcast. We are glad to have you back. I'm joined once again by our head of schools, Rod Gilbert. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. I'm Mike Siciliano. It's good to be here. We have a guest today, Willie Briscoe. Thanks Willie, for thanks for being here. Yeah. Willie is a dad here. Willie is the founder and director of the Hope Leadership Academy. You want to tell our audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, like you said, uh, my name is Willie Briscoe, and I have three students here, high school, middle school, and elementary. Um, invested father, I guess I'm called a unicorn, and I serve in a um, uh, ministry called Hope Leadership Academy, which serves underserved um, students and kids in southeast San Diego that come from primarily broken fatherless homes, and we seek to um, introduce them to their Heavenly Father and then um, bridge all the, the challenges and the barriers that they have to success. And so love serving in the community of San Diego and love being a part of Santa Fe Christian. Well, we love having you. We've, we've partnered with you and your organization a few times now. And am, I'm right that you are getting pretty much the complete SFC experience right now. Yes. You have a lower school student, a middle school student, and an upper school student. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so you get all the emails. All the emails. That's why we call them unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> There's always about 40 families like that. Exactly, except for I make my wife get the emails. <laughs> okay. That's why yeah. I'm not responsible for the information. <laughs> yeah. I said, did you get the emails and just put them on my calendar? And so, yeah, we have a, um, all three kids, and, and they're all having a great time and experience in each school. and the um, uniqueness of each school at Santa Fe Christian. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, today we're going to talk about the topic of race. Uh, it is it is a topic that oftentimes feels like there's so much intensity and tension around it. And it's interesting because the three of us really for the last year and a half have been doing this. And, and I think every time we do it, maybe the temperature goes down a little bit. Yeah. And that's felt good, I know, for me. Uh, it's It's been good for me, too. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, and so um, I guess I'll start with probably a question that I think a lot of people have asked us as we talk about this and that maybe they see the topic of this podcast and comes to their head, which is why are we having this conversation? I think for, at, at, the, at its core, as, as a Christian school, we need to be earnestly uh, and carefully uh, loving children enough to teach them these things. And uh, we are... Uh, as Christians, there is one human race, but we are we are different. We have differences, and uh, to uh, not address these things, especially when the world is so torn up about it, the the children uh, we owe it to the children to talk about these topics and uh, from a biblical standpoint, and give them vocabulary and a place to talk about things in a healthy way, in a way they can have good relationships. I mean, the three of us have had good conversations as three adult men. And, uh, and sometimes it takes a while for us to talk through things. And so for three eight-year-olds, I want the same for them. And I, I can't see any downside to that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think um, the world is dealing with this. Yeah. Our kids are dealing with it, and they're dealing with it in the social media space. Yeah. And if we don't help them label it, the enemy sees that void, and he steps right in, and he helps them label it. And a lot of times in the way that we wouldn't want them to and wouldn't have the biblical perspective um, that we want our children to have. And they're wrestling with these things. Yeah. And um, in their wrestling, we want to help provide the, um, the parameters by which they can really learn who they are in Christ around this issue. And sometimes it's difficult, but to your point, Mike, um, I think the, the most difficult conversation is the first one to have about these conversations. It's the first one. And then once you recognize you're safe and you're in an environment with um, people that really do want to learn and not just share their point of view, once you understand you're safe in that environment, then everything else becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, I think there right now there's a fear that if I say the wrong thing, I'll be forever labeled one thing or the other. And so our reaction to that as humans sometimes is, well, then I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah. Right? Let's just, let's just not talk about it. But I think, to be honest, one of the things we've maybe learned in our community is that there are consequences to not talking about it right. and not addressing right. it as well. Well, uh, Willie was telling me, this, saying this earlier, if you, if you don't address uh, a bad thought or uh, a bad understanding with someone, I'm just trying to use simple words for yeah. kids too, it, it can fester. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's, that's not like that's not new to race. That's actually common in marriages and in our own relationships with our children. This, this is a human relationships thing. This one has particular interest, interest for us. So we have to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, I think 
that's where the enemy does his greatest work in those voids. Um, he drives that wedge a little bit deeper, and and we don't um, we don't automatically as a as a human race we don't automatically think the best possible ideas about something where there's a void. We think the worst case scenario. <laughs> you know, we imagine that. Why text do we do message. that? Yeah, we, yeah. Are we, we just do. weird. Yeah, it's, it's our endemic nature. You know, yeah. It's our, it's our just nature. Or something? Yeah, we just we we assume that text message or that email in the worst tone, and we do that also when we have uh, conversations or a lack of conversations around race. We ex, um, we look at an expression. We look at um, someone's um, just. Uh, passing phrase or word to us and we just assume the worst about that person and um, God has a lot to say in his word about that was that true 15 20 years ago people always assume the um, because I, the word trigger has yeah, become part of it like exactly, I wouldn't have used yeah. that word two years ago but yeah I think social think it's media worse now? has you changed think, uh, really changed a little bit I think the ability to um, to say quick tidbits of information on have accountability uh. as opposed to sitting on the porch or sitting oh. and having coffee with someone and actually um, hearing their words. You know, the Bible says be quick to, to listen. Oh. You know, we, we're not quick to listen. We, we're quick to speak and wow. quick to talk. And I think that's um, just changed. And our kids yeah. are, they've only grown up in that environment. So oh, the digital citizenry. The, yeah. Exactly. So you ask them a question and they hit Google and they tell you what's truth and what's not truth mm. and, and whether it's true or not. And so I think it's just, it has impacted the ability to sit down and mm. have genuine conversations and get to know people. And that gives the latitude to what you're saying, Mike, that gives latitude to um, having someone make an off color comment or joke or something and giving them the room to repair that and have yeah. conversation. But if it just comes across in the social media, then I make all sorts of mm -hmm. diagnosis about who that person is right. and, and mm -hmm. judgment. And then I just cut them off. We're also in a very cut off uh, community yeah. society yeah. right now. We yeah. just, we just write people off. Yeah. yeah. And what I would say about that is when that happens, that doesn't give me or whoever's making the comment a chance to learn how something I said or did that I didn't intend to come across a certain way exactly maybe had an impact that was different than I thought yes and and so then we get in this cycle a little mm -hmm. bit of of distrust and and assigning motive and yeah. things that yeah. that that aren't helpful yeah. or so, labeling yeah you know, or labeling. labeling is yeah dangerous no. so so Willie what would you say as someone who's who's in our community who's mm -hmm. been in our community for a while who will who will, will hopefully Lord yeah. willing be in our community <laughs> yeah. uh, for a long time like to people who are saying gosh I wish they weren't talking about this mm -hmm. what's the best answer that we can give them yeah I think it goes back to the original comment um, our kids are dealing with it um, the world is dealing with it as a Christian school um, and part of the Christian community, we're called, the Bible says that we have been given the, um, the opportunity of reconciliation. I mean, that's a biblical mandate. If we're not, if we're not reconciling, first that means reconciling the world to Jesus, but that also means reconciling other issues. If we're not actively pursuing reconciling these things out in front of a world that is going to label it and go down the wrong road, then we leave those things up to chance and we know there's a negative consequence to that. Um, so in my own home, it's really about, um, teaching my kids how to deal with these things on a, on a daily basis as a father of three kids that deal with it on a, sometimes on a daily basis, not necessarily in Santa Fe Christian, but in a community that looks very different than they do. Um, I want to give them words. I want to give them uh, real labels and I want to give them um, a voice in that space. Um, the worst thing I can do is leave that void and that cognitive dissonance where they don't know where to file things because that generally turns into anger, resentment, and um, creates a lot of dissension and, and a lack of unity. Yeah. So this, this might seem like a, a simple question or maybe a silly question, yeah. but um, have there been difficulties for you and your family or other families of color uh, at Santa Fe, not through intent, but uh, but just that that are challenges that you've had to address. That if we, through this conversation that we're having, um, can can change, will make it easier for them or better for them to be at Santa Fe. You know, at every level, um, my kids or our family have dealt with incidents or issues, and I would I would honestly say, like most of the time, it has 
been resolved and everything has just been great. And it's been a wonderful learning opportunity. Then there's been other things that have taken other steps to, to reconcile and to, to work on. And, and um, but Santa Fe Christian is no different than um, any other institution or organization or church or there's just different people with different cultures. And so um, w one incident is where my youngest son, a little boy that loves him and a family that loves us, uh, the little boy told my son, hey, you can't, you know, kids that have your color skin can't play this game with us. And when the mom heard, she was mortified and she reached out to us on multiple levels and and, you know, made play dates and reconciled. And how old I, were they? Well, um, they the were boys. in first grade, yeah. you know, and so that kid didn't learn that at home. It's something that just rolled out of his mouth. Yeah. But at the same time, um, that family was just mortified. And um, and my wife and I, we were laughing about because we knew the family, yeah. we knew the kid, yeah. and, and we know the difference between, yeah. you know, racism, prejudice, and just sometimes just a lack of yeah. um, understanding or knowing, you know, and yeah. kids say the darndest things. I mean, yeah. they do <laughs> say, yeah. and so we were able to work that out and have play dates with the kids and the, the parents were adamant about teaching their kids like why you don't say things like that or we have to deal with it and if we don't yeah. deal with it biblically once again I think that leaves yeah. room for the enemy to label and, That's and, right. and, and speak for us in that area and do and do real damage well, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a question if you don't mind Yeah, can I go? You're my boss you can always go <laughs> So I, I, you and I I'm sure we've talked about it at some point mm -hmm. or time together but um, I, I heard from a, some alum in the mm -hmm. fall that we were talking with and then I had comments from minority children here as well, and I, I'm going to just say the composite quote because yeah. I think it represents a, a, a true heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have a minority student say, "Just I don't want to be invisible mm -hmm. with as who I am. I yes. want I want to be known. I want to be known for who I am, mm -hmm. and I and and I don't want to I don't want to just be invisible in the room. Mm -hmm. And so how if 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 I have a group of minority kids with me, how do I mm -hmm. how do I address that or what do what do they mean by that? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's a true expression. Yeah. You know, they they want to be seen for who they are. Yeah. So. I, I think, um, once again, giving them a voice and a safe place to, mm -hmm. to have a voice. Um, the reality is that, you know, the, even the word minority itself yeah. depicts the fact that they are a small percentage of a that's, larger that's group a of people. Yeah. And you can't really turn that upside down just yeah. to make us a, a group of people. That's not realistic. I don't think that's what we're called to do. But I think um, being aware and yeah. being sensitive, because at least in my own kids' perspective, um, yes, they want to be heard and they want to be seen for who they are, but it's the... Um, offhand comments yeah. and some of the culture the cultural um biases that kids bring from home and have just said in in their presence that have really really hurt them yeah. you know and i think that's part of the process is just creating space where um i, I guarantee uh, i had a conversation with one of the coaches about this he asked me almost the same question i huh. said guarantee if you allow some of these young students to see life from a different perspective and a different culture mm -hmm. i guarantee their eyes will be opened yeah. and some of those comments some of those phrases some of those thoughts um won't even um cross their mind anymore sure. um, and so you know i think there's definitely hope it's not a yeah. huge problem yeah. but it's you know we're addressing it because the world and the community yeah. is addressing it well I, I like what you started with we're we are training our children and we have to give them a grid or yes. a, a way to process things and if we don't if we don't train them with specifics yeah. about how to love one another and understand each other mm -hmm. the enemy will fill in that um, that, that gap right if, if we if we if we as fathers if we don't stand at the gap. It's an Ezekiel passage. Yes. Some, something bad will get in there. So exactly. I, I, I want to sh shift to a different question. Yeah. But when you and I started having this conversation last summer, you know, you, you know, I'm a bit of a nerd. So I've got a whole <laughs> bunch of books on it. Yeah. I, I tend to do that just to, like my little friends. And mm -hmm. um, we've all been reading Third Option. And mm -hmm. I've gotten to know Miles through that uh, conversation. Yeah. But you had mentioned to me first early that you really like Tony Evans. Yeah. Book. And so yeah. I, I went through that last fall. But what stands out in that book to you? That, yeah. And I heard you quoted it a few minutes ago before we were uh, yeah. on camera. So what, yeah. what, do you, know, what do you like about it? You know, uh, Tony has a, a um, you know, a, a oneness um, uh, phrase that he uses, which is pretty, um, it, it's pretty positive. And I think with Tony, um, yeah. say again? No, that's good. Yeah. That's good. I think, you know, with Tony is, is he's, he wants people to see 
each individual as God sees them. And when hmm. you give that, um, when you give that sort of um, value to each individual as God gives value, it's hard for you to put down or mm. to depict people as different than what God created them mm. to be. And and what I love about Tony, and, and I love Miles McPherson's book yeah. as well, but what yeah. I love about Tony is he, he creates his, his thoughts on biblical doctrine and okay. theology that go back and it gives value to the African American culture, mm. even you know, the middle the Middle Eastern culture where where I think if you give that value and you see where the um, where Africans were in historical places, biblical sure. places um, then some of the false ideologies about blacks or hmm. other cultures can be dismissed. Okay. And I, and I love that. And I, I love that he builds it off places that I can go back to scripture and see, um, you know, and, and follow up and, and, and hold them accountable. Well, t- tell them they need to come up with a new ver- updated version. Yeah. Right? I, don't, <laughs> I mean, because I, I tried to get a whole bunch of copies of it and yeah. I couldn't find that many, but. This cable. Well, this is just 2015. Yeah, so 2015. Call them. You know yeah. people there, right? <laughs> yeah, tell, I do tell know them people. To, I, so. let, let, you write the forward to the next one. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> that'd be dangerous. So, Rod, you've you've and and maybe you want to talk a little bit about your journey through this as the head of school. And yeah. there's, there's so much stuff out there right now to yeah. read on this. There are so many ideas of yeah. what the what solution is, or even what the problem is. Yeah. But maybe you can share a little bit about your journey over the past year and a half or so. Yeah. And, be and, glad um, to. And how you've processed all that yeah. and and what you're thinking about as you've well, digested all I, that. I'm, I'd love to do that. I, um, you know, we had a, a lot of heartache among alum last summer that you and I met on Zoom. And uh, we were, it was very normal. Most every private school in the country had a situation like this. And um, so as we were listening to those voices, it, it, it tenderized my heart. That it, it wasn't like it was an anti-SFC. It was just a a call out of let's do something. And so my tendency as a leader is to go slow and and make sure there's follow through for years and years and years. And when I reached out to Willie, he had said, whatever you do, Rod, go slow. And if you're, if you think you're going too slow, you're probably not. And uh, so that, that fit my sort of crockpot style, but in my heart, I wanted to get the school's conversation to a place where it's healthy and not shrill and not Twitter filled, and 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 the negotiating of that in my own heart was hard, and um, but I think I think like uh, we had all the teachers got a copy of Miles's book, and then we had two pilot groups that went through some of the exercises. I got good feedback from the teachers, and Willie and I stayed in touch through that, and 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 in my heart, I thought if the 160 employees can can learn to just talk about these things as a community in our hall, in our hallways and in our, um, in our mentoring sort of way, uh, the, uh, that will have an ever flowing, uh, impact on the children and the moms and dads. If, if 160 employees could just say, we, we love talking about this from a biblical standpoint. And so that, that's the slow process. And, uh, I, and, uh, the, the, uh, the board read through, uh, the third option last year and were cheering me on, on it. And, uh, I think so. it'd be helpful to, to talk a little bit about, um, the third option just oh. for a minute, because, yeah. you know, there's, there's so much out there in the way of curriculum. And, um, you know, I think, I yeah. think there's a, there's a group of people who say, you know, oh my gosh, is it, is there some curriculum that's telling us how to think about this issue and it's a certain way and yeah. is it biblical and, it, it, I don't. To me, it's felt like um, the third option has been really good at number one, grounding everything biblically. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And number two, providing a way for us to just share our stories yeah. and to personalize and humanize this, and, yeah. and get a little out of the. I mean, he starts with this is spiritual, not political. We're yeah. not going to get into the political stuff. We're not talking about systems. We're talking about our relationships. We're not and talking about critical race theory. Right. I mean, so, so critical race theory is, is a big thing in, uh, that's out there right now. And it should be because it's a hot topic. Right. But I, I, I think it has no place in any, any conversation at K-12 world at all. Okay. uh, So, so just to be clear, we're not going to be putting critical race theory in front of our students or teachers or anything like that. No. And Will and I, that was like last summer's conversation. That's so last summer. Okay. But no, it just wouldn't make any sense. And uh, for me, uh, I loved, uh, and you know, uh, I, when I talked to Miles about three weeks ago, and I said, "You know, you're good on camera. You know, you, you're good at what you do." And he's a funny guy. And yeah. um, but uh, I liked his one of his opening points when he said, 
when he introduced the conversations, uh, he said, this is more uh, biblical similarities training. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that was how, when he cued it up that way, it was a lot of the discussions were what we have in common. And uh, it was just so helpful to hear right. people's stories. And I thought, we're, we're getting somewhere on this. Right. And that's and, not uh, to say we're ignoring the differences. Gosh, no. Right? In fact, no. he talks about celebrating uniqueness. Yeah. But, but it is in our similarities through those differences that we all can come together and be united yeah. and, and united in Christ. And, yeah. All right. Well, as is usually the case when we get together, we're talking longer than I think we had thought <laughs> yeah, we, we were going to. I know. This has uh, been fun. Yeah. So, uh, so i just like to tell our listeners we're going to break this into two episodes. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this will be the end of episode one. And please join us for episode two of this discussion. And we look forward to seeing you back with us.